Ever wondered how humans learned to breathe underwater? Okay, technically, we didn't. But we got clever. Ancient Greek sponge divers used hollow reeds to breathe at the surface. They watched the seabed from the surface. Aristotle wrote about divers using breathing tubes like an elephant's trunk. Renaissance minds took it further. Around 1500, Leonardo da Vinci sketched masks. He sketched air tubes. He even sketched full diving suits, ideas ahead of their time. Air you could bring down with you changed things. Diving bells let people descend inside a pocket of trapped air. In 1691, Edmund Halley sent fresh air down in barrels to extend bottom time. By the 19th century, real underwater walking arrived. Augustus Seeb's standard diving dress, helmet. Augustus Seeb's standard diving dress, suit. Augustus Seeb's standard diving dress, surface supplied air. Recreational diving needed something lighter. In the 1930s, Louis de Corlieu patented modern swim fins. Rubber masks with glass lenses spread to swimmers and spearfishers. Then, 1943, Cousteau and Gagnon created the Aqualung. The open-circuit demand regulator made self-contained underwater breathing practical and portable. Post-war, the ocean opened to the public. Underwater filmmakers like Hans Haas and Cousteau brought reef life to living rooms. NIUI standardized training in 1959. YMCA scuba spread around the same era. PADI formed in 1966 to standardize certification. Snorkeling took its own path. Simple gear, big views. The word snorkel came from the submarine air mast. The J-shaped tube became common. Mask, fins, practice. People learning to float and breathe. Suddenly coral gardens were open to anyone who could float. Free divers exploring on a single breath. Scuba divers visiting shipwrecks, reeds, bells, helmets, regulators. Each step brought us closer to the sea. If you enjoyed this time travel tour, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and see you underwater safely. Bye.